Hello everyone and welcome to Outside Interference. Today we have episode 9 of season 2 of the Academy. So I did decide to go ahead and sim 2 years because after a year nothing had really happened. Like, they had had some matches but all in all, really nothing happened. It was basically just the last couple episodes on repeat and the last thing I want for this series to be is boring so I just juiced it up a little bit by simming another year. Hopefully you guys don't mind too much. Wrestler of the Year was Matt Seidel. Company was WWE, Team of the Year was Ambrose and Reigns, Match of the Year was at Impact One Night Only November, where Matt Seidel beat Andrew Everett, Show of the Year was WWE Clash of Champions, Young Wrestler was Azumi, I think this is the last year she's eligible, so we'll finally see someone new, Veteran Wrestler is Roderick Strong, Female is Athena, Most Improved is Iron League of Wrestling, Independent wrestler is Britt Baker, UPW original. Well, not really original, but is a part of the UPW roster. If you're not watching my local global series, go ahead and check that out. Manager of the year is Maurice Mizanin. Announcer is Tanzan Inihara. Color commentator is Portia Perez. And referee is Derek Moore. So, that pretty much does it for the awards. Last year, there wasn't anything too notable. Lasombro won another wrestler of the year, Bill Morrissey and Eric Anthony, also known as Cass and Amore. Young wrestler was Azumi, as you'd probably expect. Veteran was Volador. Female was Athena for the third time in a row. Actually, fourth time in a row. Independent was Matt Tremont. Company was CMLL. Seems like they're kind of trading place with WWE after New Japan's kind of been on a slump for a while, it seems, or at least not performing to the point where you would expect them to be after like eight in a row to start off this series. Most improved company last year was TRCW, don't exactly know what that is. Match of the year was La Sombra defeating Titan. Card of the year was CMLL October 2025. Manager was Raven. Announcer was E.G. Tosaka. And color commentator was Portia Perez with the referee Takeyuki Yagi. So, moving on to the mail. MMPW made a contract offer to Junior Scorpio, which he obviously extended. Uh, French Sensation walked out on Smash Canada, probably because they weren't booking him, which is really unfortunate. Jacob Wolf is now rated as Flabby. Dragon Fist signed with PWG, finally gets a contract. Hopefully this is going to spur on the rest of the Academy graduates to do bigger and better things rather than just wrestling on a couple independent shows every year. And Tiger Dream is also rated as Flabby, but is able to work in all game areas, so hopefully Gaining those extra pounds didn't affect her too much. Moving on to the short list, so we can look at these guys' matches. Alex Runnels, we'll see how he did. Uh, two wins, one draw, five losses. Highest rating, 23. Average rating, 20. So not too bad of a year. He worked on a cancer fundraising show, a cancer charity show, rather. And that's, that's pretty much the most notable thing. I mean, he never really faced anyone too notable, and he lost most of his matches, but at the same time he got nine, wait, no, eight. He got eight matches, so pretty good. I mean, as long as he is getting booked, we can hope that he will soon be signed and, uh, you know, get booked more. Um, unfortunately for Brogan Bennett, zero wins, zero draws, three losses, but, you know, she's getting booked. Highest rating 27, average rating 21, so not a bad year for her. She did face Lucy Cole twice which is, I, I guess, interesting. I'm really hoping that even if she doesn't get picked up, she at least gets a couple more independent matches, because I think that's at least what she deserves. I mean, I really hope everybody gets more independent matches, or gets signed. We'll go ahead and move on to Dragon Fist. He's only an enhancement talent in PWG, but hopefully he got a match. He did not in PWG. What about in 2025? I should probably be looking at these two. He didn't in 2025 either. But hopefully 2027 will be the first year where he makes his PWG debut. Because he was signed pretty late in the year, I do believe. But it looks like he might have been facing off against... Nope, not David Starr. Different Starr. Julian Starr. Maybe they're related? Probably not. But uh, we'll go ahead and move on to Frankie Youngblood. Always a constant on the European independent scene. And he had 6 wins, 1 draw, and 4 losses. Highest rating 32. Average rating 27. He did well, obviously. Nigel McGuinness Memorial Show. I, I guess Nigel McGuinness passed away. That is obviously quite sad, but 
with how healthy Nigel McGuinness is, I don't see him passing away in 2026. I don't know. We'll have to look into the circumstances around Nigel McGuinness's death at the end of the episode because, you know, that's just one of the random TEW things that tends to happen every once in a while. Maybe it was a Kenny death. French Sensation didn't have any matches. Not much to say about that, obviously. Jacob Wolf probably didn't have any matches. Not much to say about that. I really... I don't understand. Maybe it's because I switched mods. If I'm doing a season 3, I need to edit the mod more to uh, increase our chances of getting booked and getting signed because with with this new mod, uh, it's probably because there's too many people and our guys just don't really stick out. But with this mod, it's just not working out for a lot of guys. Moving on to Junior Scorpio. He is currently signed as a main eventer to two companies which is hopefully good for his matches, and 14 wins, 0 draws, 9 losses, highest rating being a 60, average rating being a 51. That's pretty good if I do say so myself. He got a shot at the NWA World Heavyweight title, but unfortunately he was not able to obtain it. That was against Ryback, actually. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty high up there. I assume if Ryback's holding it at this point, it's pretty prestigious after Nick Aldis held it for probably a really long time, unless... Of course, he lost it all into Cody Rhodes, although I highly doubt that that was actually booked in TEW at this point. But uh, we'll go ahead and move on from Junior Scorpio to Sam Barron. Hopefully, he was able to make some waves. And, you know, one match, zero wins, zero draws, one loss. And the year before, zero wins, one draw, and one loss. And, you know, obviously his ratings aren't really there, but at least he's getting booked, and that's all you can really ask for at this point. I'm really hoping uh, the guys get more matches, but I'll probably say that a hundred more times, and I don't know if it's going to happen at this point. I'll do what I can to edit the mod from the inside, maybe like take some people out of the independent scene to make sure that there's spots open for these guys, but nothing too drastic because, you know, that would just destroy the integrity of the whole series. Unfortunately for the people that did it this season, they were more unlucky than last season's contestants, per se. Tiger Dream did not have a match either year. It looks like her rivalry with, what was her name? Yoshiko ended. Unfortunately for her, that was really the only thing keeping her booked. Two-Face, Smash, and C4 mid-carter. I guess he's a Smash lower mid-carter. He had a chance to face off with French Sensation, but unfortunately, I don't think that happened. Uh, he faced MVP a lot, which is obviously not the MVP we know and love. It's Michael Von Payton, the Canadian MVP. But 6 wins, 0 draws, 9 losses in 26, and 0 wins, 0 draws, 12 losses. So a big improvement for Two-Face. Not really in the ratings, per se, but 40 or 35 average, 40 highest. Not bad. And, of course, he's actually winning matches now, so... You know, he looks to be a mainstay in the tag division in both companies, seeing that he got three title shots, and unfortunately for him, he was not able to obtain any of them, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. He's only 29. I'll, I mean, obviously, all of them are only 29, and for some reason, still considered young lions despite being nine years in. Uh, I don't know how that works, but, you know, hopefully he'll be able to capture gold soon enough, and I do think it's about time for him. Next up, Walter Wall. We'll see how he did. I'm not expecting too much, but three wins, zero draws, two losses, highest rating 31, average rating 24. I think Walter Wall is probably one of the most talented on the independents because all the other guys who have independent matches are more in the 20s and the teens, and Walter Wall is able to put up like 30s and 20s against competition that would not be able to put up those numbers otherwise. So good couple years for Walter Wall. I do really, really, really hope he gets signed by like ICW or someone because then he'll really be able to flourish. But let me go ahead and check out Nigel McGuinness. Where is he? Is he not going to be on here? Is it filtered? Uh, he should be on here. So I took a look at it, and it turns out that it doesn't tell you how he passed away. But coincidentally... Mr. Niall Fox, a referee, unfortunately passed away after his scarf got caught in a ceiling fan. So guys, can we please get a hashtag screw scarfs in the comments? It would be very much appreciated for the memory of Niall Fox. 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Kind of ended on a down note, even if it was by scarf. But uh, if you did like the video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys in the next one.